thought about talking to somebody. Maybe somebody like your mama. No, 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 no. Oh, listen. To who, ma? To you? What's it? You gonna raise my son now? You gonna raise him? I messed up. I did not have love for you when you needed it. You ain't gonna love me, but you gonna know that I love you. Low light, rated R, now playing. I got some shit to free up the process. I said, I knew And they pay, you don't even have to pay the verdict if you do this, right? Hey, what's going on, YouTube? It's Kevin and Mikel. We are back with a new video. I hope you guys enjoyed your week. I'm sorry that we are a little bit late this week. We wanted to continue to watch the rest of the new edition story, which came on BET. And also this week, the show, um, just the series itself, it broke a lot of ratings for me. Really? Because I was trying to figure out the ratings. Yeah, and it gave me some of the highest ratings in five years. So this, this is a good thing for BET. Uh, if you're watching the Scorpion Show for the first time, I hope that you click that subscribe button. Also, to the subscribers mm -hmm. of the Scorpion Show, or the new subscribers, once you click the subscribe button, or you already click the button, there is a bell right next to the subscribe button. Once you click that bell, you'll be able to get notifications on when we upload our videos. So make sure y'all click that bell and say, yes, you want to receive notifications from the Scorpion Show. And please share our videos on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, or wherever you choose to share our videos. So, let's talk about the New Edition story. Now, uh, you know, New Edition came out in the early 80s, and they were a successful boy group, just like, you know, there were many boy groups back in that time. And we've seen the ups and downs of this group, and this was a great story, and I want to give kudos, I don't know who directed it, I want to give kudos to the director, to the actors, to the accuracy of this film, from going back in time, to like album covers, mm -hmm. to videos, to um, even the one where I was like, oh my god, I had that heavy tension in the interview with uh, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, baby, that was on yeah. point, like everything about this is on point, and the outfits, yeah, and the gift. Yes, and this is how a biopic should be done. Take notes, Lifetime. BET, y'all did that. Even um, TV One, they're good, but BET, y'all fucking did that. That's how you do a story. And I was into this whole story up until the last, like, 1597, because they had too many performances going on. Because I, I, I thought it was going to be some more drama for the bus. So, <laughs> I just sat there and I was like, okay, go through And it went on seven minutes early, but it was good. And the main thing that we are learning from all of these groups is that everybody got robbed in the beginning because they didn't read the contract. Except for Ice Cube. Ice Cube? Ice Cube was the only one who read his contract. I didn't even know that. Oh, from, uh, um, Sherry Alcock. Sherry Alcock. Ice Cube was the only one who had comic goddamn sense. Yeah. Because we'd be like, they trying to get rich, they trying to get their money. <laughs> and I, I kind of felt bad for the moms. But you mean to tell me none of the moms, none of the moms, because they all trying to get that money to get the fucking project. They want to get out of the book. They got excited over $500. 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 was a lot of money. No, it wasn't. $500 was a lot of money. In the no. Project rent is how much? But to, 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 to somebody in the projects, yeah, that is a lot of money. But that ain't gonna get you but so damn far. You're right. But they're just gonna bring us some more money. Five hundred dollars. Somebody in the projects, five hundred dollars is great for food. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't have drawn you, you yeah, you're not gonna move out the projects now. Yeah, yeah. you gonna you gonna fill up your refrigerator. Yeah, you're gonna wait for the same thing and wait for that new one. You see, they had their little bikes and everybody in the neighborhood was going to break. I'm surprised nobody tried to uh, take with their bikes and stuff. You know, that's how people do. When they see you get it on, they see, oh, okay, we're going to get that. That's how they do it. That's how they do it. You get a new contract, oh, somebody going to kill you because you got the new contract, and they don't. People do stuff like that all the time. They say this every year. Okay, so my thing with the moms and the money, okay, I feel like the acting on that part, it could have been better. Because I feel like if somebody owes you your money and you know you're supposed to get your money, you need to be going off. Especially when they got that check for a dollar and set mm -hmm. each. Mm -hmm. A dollar, bitch, uh, uh, a table would have been thrown. Uh, 
plants would have been broken. I've seen women mad about their men cheating on them, you know, more angry than about a dollar to but, check one dollar eighty seven. So but we are talking about women who don't know nothing about the business. They don't they don't know anything about the industry. These women probably I'm just saying, I'm just using a hypothetical. Some of them probably didn't finish school. One of the boys I remember him saying his mom had him when he was fifteen when she was fifteen. So these women probably were women who didn't know no better. When you got somebody in the business and in the industry that's gonna come to you and explain to you why you got a dollar in this eighty seven, no matter how mad you are, at the end of the day, you wanna to listen to them and say, Well, I'm mad as hell, but to me that makes sense because you do have to pay for all that, you have to pay for that. Now somebody like us who has a little bit more common sense, we know a little bit more. We'll be like, no, 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 I'm not buying that because I've done that a few times in the past. sounded back then 
But I guess they probably figured, well, he came from this group, this popular group. He was the lead singer in this group, and he's branching off on his own. And so he'll just be successful, and he walked into that second album game. Like some other stars of today. It happens all the time. The sophomore chance, as they say. Yeah, but um, what else happened? Just Bobby Brown himself. Bobby Brown had a big ass ego. And Bobby Brown was very rude, ignorant. I mean, every negative yes. adjective you could think of was by Brown. Brown. Because he was a nigga who ain't never had yeah. shit. Yeah. And he showed you, I am a nigga who ain't never had shit. I ain't come from shit. So now that I got, you know who, who reminds me of him? Soldier Boy. Somebody who he ain't used to having shit. So now Soldier Boy flaunts everything that he gets on the social media. He has to flaunt everything because he's not used to having it. But what I told two of my coworkers today, I said, watching this new edition movie and watching Bobby Brown, or watching Bobby Brown being portrayed in this film, it took me back, and I posted this on Instagram last night, it took me back to 2009 when Whitney Houston did her last interview with Oprah, and when she explained Bobby Brown's attitude towards her, how he cheated her on her with these different women, he would use her credit cards to take different women out, and she would get the bill, how he just had this whole big evil thing, to the point where she felt like she had to dummy down herself to make him feel bad. And as I'm watching this, I'm like, Whitney Houston mm. talked about this in 2009, and it's coming to fruition. It's coming. Like, this is really true. Like, wow, like, this was really him. Like, this wasn't make-believe. And I knew it was him because he had a part of making this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we've seen so many stories about Bobby Brown. I've heard so many stories about him that this was true. But, you know, Bobby Brown, his debut, not debut, probably his second album, so seven million albums. So I didn't even know Bobby Brown was a new edition. So probably like the 2000s, because I, like, you know, right here they songs, right. but you don't know the history. And I was like, I was like, Bobby Brown, that's all I know. And then he got with Whitney, but Bobby ain't really had no success like that in the 90s. And no. like since uh, that Bobby album, everything else was like, he was still riding away from the new edition. Yeah, and then he was riding away with him with Whitney Houston, right? But not, you don't know, like, you know, all this old stuff, like all the old stuff. Yes, I know Bobby Brown, but the 90s, like, to me, every man with you know, I don't know I, nothing about himself. I'm going to jail so many times. And no, wait, I'm one more thing else that I noticed is that he was doing drugs way before he got with Houston. So versus his claim is that when he used to introduce him to that stuff, he was already doing that stuff. And I believe that we learned that when he used to was already doing that stuff yeah, from, from my brother. brother. Yeah, my own brother. Yes. Well, maybe she introduced him some stuff that he never tried before, and vice versa. That's what I kind of took from it. Maybe. Because cause it may have been stuff that he had never done before that she introduced him to, because she was more at the time, like her brother did it. And then there probably was stuff that he was doing that she had never done, and they, you know, and when they got together, it was like, can you imagine the honeymoon? <laughs> All I know is Sister Houston was right the whole time. She was, she was right the whole effing time. She was, but my daughter wasn't gonna say, and she wasn't like, she was, because you can't, you can't, right. you, you can't point the finger at Paul Bobby when your own son admitted, no, mom, I introduced Whitney to drugs way before she even let Bobby Brown. So you know what I mean? It's just that Bobby Brown had this bad boy image early on. And so Sissy Houston saw that and said, oh, no, I don't want you with him because I brought you up in the church and you had this good girl image and that's what you're going to keep. Not realizing, or maybe she did. You never know. Maybe she didn't know that Wendy was on stuff. And she probably thought, like, oh, my God, if she gets with you, it's really going to be bad. Maybe she wanted somebody to be with to get her off. Well, can I just say this? Because I don't want to go through every character. But can I just say Luke fucking James was an ass. Literally. He did that. And you know I love Luke James. Yes. That's he what I'm surprised to say. did that. And the fact that he played Johnny Gill. Now, I knew Johnny Gill was in the audition, but I didn't really know too much about Johnny Gill's personal life. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so cool. yeah, from, yeah. But the fact that he played Johnny Gill, and then when it came time for the musical scenes, Luke James said, fuck y'all. I mean, well, they all kind of, I think, use their own voices in certain parts. But Luke James was singing. <laughs> you sure? I know he was singing some parts. God, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. He just asked me, was I sure? 
Now, I know I heard Luke James sing Shout, but all the times I was like, that's Johnny Gill. I'm just saying. That's how good of a singer Luke James is that you thought you were listening to Johnny Gill. No, that was Luke James singing. That was him singing. That Sonny. That was Luke James singing that song, baby. Don't get it twisted. You might have to get Luke James on this. Okay? Okay. And it's funny because Luke James posted a video, and I uploaded it too. He posted a video on his page where they were, um, where that scene was, that scene was on, and one of the guys said, "You better sing in your natural voice." That was a whole oh, scene. Wow, that's good. How do you have somebody like Luke James in a movie, in a movie like this and not use his voice? Luke James can sing, and he's a versatile actor. I mean, singer. <laughs> Why are you surprised? <laughs> This is no shade. I know you're not saying this is a shade. Yeah. That's kind of like, and this is no shade, so I'm always in the But that's kind of like if Sierra was to play Janet Jackson. Mm -hmm. I would not expect uh, them to just keep playing Janet Jackson's vocals because Sierra has a soft voice like Janet. So I'm like, well, you can use Sierra's voice. I can see if they were using like a Rihanna. They'd be like, no, you can't use Rihanna for Janet's voice. Her singing voice, you would have to use Janet. But Sierra has a soft voice like Janet, so I can see But I know the difference between the sound. We all know the difference. But I'm surprised you didn't know the difference between Luke James and Johnny Hill. Oh, he, he did a great job. And the scene, like, and the scene with uh, the music video. Um, uh, are you all right? My, my, yeah, my, that was Luke James, too. Oh, Kevin, I guess it's good. How about the tweet? You say Kevin didn't want to devil with James Hanger, dude. I did not. I'm surprised. I, I just want to make sure you're sure. Bitch! You going to ask me, am I sure? You know what? <laughs> we need Luke James to confirm this. Well, well, he just did a great job. He did a great job saying that. His acting was good too before this would be his first acting role. So we're oh, sitting here recording right now, right? And we're talking about the new edition movie. And so I bring up Luke James and how great he sounded. Why Kevin just gonna say to me that he he asked me was I sure if that was Luke James really singing? The whole time it was Johnny Gill. The whole time. Why wouldn't it be Luke James? And why is Kevin the only person that didn't know that that was Luke James singing in the movie? I know he sang some parts, but not through the whole movie. Cause that shit sounded like Johnny Gill. You know, that shit sounded like if he was singing Johnny Gill, he sounded great. He sounded great. Like, yes, but I was surprised. Let me make clear. I was surprised, and I'm trying to figure out why was he so surprised. We've had Luke James on our show three different occasions because he sounded just like Johnny Gill. But that's what happened. Somebody else singing That's what happened. Oh, all right, Jesus, you just a stand. I know, bitch. And that's probably why I knew that was him. Just like I would know from the Shannon singer. Yes, and I know nobody knew. I think we all knew the Shannon singer. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, what else happened? Um, we seen that Mike Business took a role of being like more of the leader, the director, and all things like that for the group. And you know, I really first some of the actors I don't think look like the original members. Okay, okay, I'm gonna no, that. No, no, they did. But I mean, but their acting was so good. That I didn't pay, I didn't really care about that. Yes. But I mean, I'm glad that he was the one that took initiative to say, you know what, this is our group, and I'm tired of us getting raped, and we want to fire this manager, we're going to get a new one, and you know, they really took off, but. I need a memory card, man. Trying we to take we can't that, understand that perspective, you know, man. I'm sorry. You have three of the biggest and best so cars and in the world. And so, and you need an everyday Chevy to get you around the new home things around. Uh, we can't have sympathy for you. Uh, you can have that perspective. Uh, he can give you no yeah, and sympathy and you see him, uh, when you are the Paul James, the best player in the world. We have all of those two top heavy tools. Uh, I'm like, that's my, that's my I'm just like, well, damn, is he down Joanne the scammer? Like, if you already been through this, why would you want to do the same thing to somebody else? Uh, Which I didn't like, but if that's how he was, I hope that he's a changed person because that's just not a good look. And I'm not surprised that he even like that being a film. I'm just glad that everybody was being uh, honest and authentic about what went on because if they wasn't trying to get somebody, they would have called You know what's so funny? Because I honestly didn't know that. That whole voice and then do a digital mm -hmm. connection, and that that was a great, uh, that was a great little clip that they showed because I was like, I didn't know that they even like, 
like I know, like I just didn't know that Michael Bivens had some part or some hand in voice to him. And then they took the title of a new edition song and made it, they made them, themselves a group after that. Like I, I, didn't, I didn't know that, but um, I know they, that Michael Bivens was a great, uh, he had a great ear for sound. So when we found a group like Voice of Medicine, you know what? We're going to get you guys signed. And then I'm just like, I'm thinking about Motown Philly when they say Voice of Medicine, ABC, BBD, East Coast Swing. I'm like, wait a minute now. And these yeah. are all the groups that the, uh, that Mike Bivens uh, manages. Oh, yeah. Like, so, what the fuck was ABC? ABC, they had the song Aisha. Oh, that was the name of the group? I think so. Another Bad Creation. What was that? Uh, I hope that was yeah, Jermaine Perry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see High Performance Heating and Air Conditioning techs and vans all over town making customers happy. Call High Performance right now and save thousands of dollars per season with special interest financing on a high-efficiency hot water boiler. High Performance will make you as happy as hell. Oh, no, Chris Cross was Jermaine the first Cross was Jermaine. And I think ABC was like this. You can always Google it to be sure you can know you can. Oh, my God. I don't want to make this. Um, what else happened in this stuff? Okay. Um, the guy that played Ralph Tresman, I think he was the most accurate one that looked like him. I feel like uh, I've you know what I'm about to say. It. Uh, I feel like I've seen him so before. And I don't. Kevin, I'm watching this guy last night, and I'm like, I see him somewhere before. And as the movie went on and on, I'm like, yo, where do I know this guy from? It's going to come to me. I don't think I've ever met him. I just think I've seen him somewhere before. Maybe he played in something before that I've seen. But, you know, that. Yes, you know. And he was so, and he had Ralph's mannerism and the sweet girl, and he was all smiling. He was all <laughs> Now, where do you know him from? I don't know where I know him from. You better find out. I want to find out what these. these. What did they say in the first time to say? You can clearly hear his voice cut. Duh, I'm talking about him saying Johnny Gill. I, I didn't hear it. Maybe I was too busy to my phone. I don't know. I can't. That's probably what it was. You probably was too busy tweeting. No, but I know. But I know Johnny Gill's voice. No. Because he has a strong, powerful voice. Like he knew. Because uh, voice to men will be not voice to men. Voice to men. Voice to men is the biggest. I think it's the biggest. He sounds like Johnny Gill. He's supposed to. He's supposed to. Yes. You did a great job. Bitch, he sounds just like John McGill. He's a fool. You know, shut up. He's a fool. You have to stand in like, oh my God. Normally, you when you act you got somebody like him. Luke, the man Luke, does, man. Luke James doesn't sound like Johnny. Luke did a great job. Kevin is tripping. That was definitely Luke singing. Ricky Bell even tweeted that it was Kat, the cast singing. So, it, it actually was because there's a there's a um there's a video that Luke comes to do with them all singing. And the guy who played Ralph, it's funny because he's not a great singer. But what I love about them singing together because I feel as though I think the only two singers in the cast was Elijah Kelly and Luke James, even though Elijah Kelly is Luke James, but he does have, because he does a lot of Broadway. But I think that Luke James, with his actual singing talent, when the rest of them sang, I think when he blended in his voice, he knew how to Dude. do his thing to make the rest of them sound good together. But look, I'm just like, okay, well, well there you go. Yeah. I just learned something new that they all said. Did you? Actually, yeah, because I realized that, because you know what, I didn't think it's the guy who played Ralph, I didn't think that that was really him singing too, and I'm mm-hmm. listening to some scenes, and I'm like, okay, that is him, but then I realized that that was him actually singing throughout the movie, when I saw that video of them singing, like, behind the thing, and I was like, oh, that was him singing, and he sounds like, that's crazy, yeah, no, it's not crazy, that that's, that's not right. crazy, you know what it is, that is genius, but I was, you know, yeah, 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 what's the thing, yeah, he's in, but I did a great job acting, though. Yes. Because it's much better than now. Because you know I'm not a fan of Empire anymore. But I felt like he did a great job. But I think that, um, uh, what was I going to say? With this film, BET took their time mm-hmm. making this film. They didn't just make a lot of things and rush the hell out of it, too. Because we found out about it during, like, the BET Awards, I think. They did a good job at producing and everything. Who's <laughs> that? 
outra seria a perigo que eu estava no outro. Acho que é assim, gente. But what I do hope is that um, with Blue Jays the senior career, I do hope that it takes off. With him being in such a um, big biopic like this mm -hmm. and people watching every night, I hope that people are like, wait a minute, let me go see what his music sounds like. And I hope that he gains some new fans. And as any time you do a film like this, I hope that they all capitalize mm -hmm. off of this. Mm -hmm. If you had three nights of exposed people tweeting about the movie mm -hmm. and things like that, you got to capitalize on mm -hmm. that. You can't just sit back. And they bang and chill. You know what I was gonna ask? You gotta get up here and, right? you know, get your name out there anymore. I, post, I agree with you 100%. I posted this uh, picture and I said, listen, and I got 1600 likes for this, and both people were agreeing. I said, I can definitely see Luke James after watching this movie playing Marvin yet with the whole. I can see it. After listening to him, I'm like, I can see this man playing play Marvin Gaye. I, I think they had. um. They had somebody else and they said that they were the cast of the Marvin Gaye. And I was just like, oh, you need a singer. And then I saw Luke last night and I was like, Luke could play that. This whole scrumpy look and that when Marvin Gaye went into that, when he transitioned from the whole. Remember when he was with Tammy uh, Terrell and he was that clean cut, suave man? And then the 70s came about with the war in Vietnam and then he started going into that whole scrumpy look and that. The whole beanies and all that, and then he was no longer that suave, debonair guy. He was that what's going on guy. I can see Luke James transferring to that. And then, be quite honest, I thought he did a great job in acting last night too, as far as for this to be his first film. I was like, wow, he did a really good job. He's all a team too. Every time he turns around, he mouth. But I can see him. I can just see him, and I'm, I'm rooting for Luke to do that. As a matter of fact, I'll put up my paycheck to um, help that. Today much. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, something. Oh my God. Listen, can you get the ball rolled? Let's say that. Look, let's get the ball rolled. No, but other than that, I thought this was a great move. Yeah, it really, really was. And BT, I tried to put on the fucking commercials. Though. But they had to get paid. These were I'm sure they had to get paid. But it was just too many. Kevin, the first episode was like one was like every 12 fucking minutes. Yeah, that's not. They're still this bad. That's why the commercials are out. No, the view don't even do every twelve hours. The view will go every fifteen to sixteen minutes, yeah. and then go to commercials. I know one thing. I'm tired of seeing commercials with the boy. Right. I'm tired of seeing that. I'm the diva. <laughs> every goddamn show we see got on the Mary Jane. Whatever they're waiting to promote it. Yeah, like, you know all these people are watching. Yes, <laughs> got a show every every time they watch a commercial. You seen a BET commercial? I mean a BET advertisement. But, you know, I think I want to see that uh, The Quiet, and there was something else. It was another show that looks like it's better than The Quiet. I want to see that one too. But I'm glad that BET, y'all coming up in the world. I'm glad. I'm really glad. Did you have any parts in the film that you really, really liked, or it was like that was really crazy that you seen? One of the parts that I just was like too was really drastic was when the scene where. Uh, Ricky was having that overdose in the bathroom. Yeah. Oh my god, that was, that was too real. <laughs> hey, man! <laughs> the way he spit up and blood, had to call a scene. Because whatever he was chewing on before he stayed in action, he was spitting it out. You ever had that happen to you when you're. Don't you go there. Well, wait a minute, go there first. <laughs> <laughs>
Either turn the TV down or turn it off. Yeah, they got TV on the door. Yes, you can. 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 Yes, you can.
Matthew was their manager, and I believe they had another manager at the time too, who passed away. And then all this funny money was going on. So they like, oh, well, she's driving this, and I, you know, I can't even. I only have enough money to buy this, so I don't have enough money for that, this or that, and all that. And that's what I think she was talking about without her really saying it, because we've all heard their stories from a long time ago. And, you know, I hope they don't try to start doing interviews <laughs> doing this because it's old. But I remember those times when they were talking about how they were not getting their money like the other members of the group was. And I'm not saying no name because I don't want to, you know, mess nothing up. But, um, because I don't want to say, oh, they said this name and it wasn't. So, y'all go find them old interviews. And then, like, you hear the story about Matthew not doing right about Beyonce when it comes to her money and all of that. And that's why she had to let him go. I was like, well, I'm not surprised. He did that to the other members. So, you know, he definitely reaped everything he sold. Matthew knows. But anyway, that's all I want to say. I don't think Matthew knows. I don't think that that a Destiny's Child film that shows I don't think it's not I don't think that's a part of the story. No, this is what I'm getting ready to say, because I agree with you. It does have to be a part of the story story. But I don't think a Destiny's Child film where you're gonna get the accuracy, the the right. behind the scenes personal stuff, it's going to be like a new edition film. No. Matthew knows as far as I'm concerned, is never, ever, ever going to admit out of his mouth, I could be wrong, but he, I don't think he's ever going to admit out of his mouth that he did anything wrong by any of those other girls or by his daughter. He's just not going to admit that. I don't think he's going to admit it. We know he did. <laughs> but he's not going to verbally say it. So therefore, just with that alone, it's not going to work. Because Matthew knows is a smart man. We all know it. The minute a network puts something out like that, you can forget it. It's going to be all types of lawsuits because man is going to feel like he's going to say it ain't true. Yeah, no, no, no. But he's going to say it ain't true because he's not going to want to admit They better come up with a story where, I mean, they hire every Olivia Pope and y'all come into a room. This is the story that definitely has to be told and I'm only going to see an authorized version. I don't want to see the unauthorized version because anybody can go based off a book and anybody can put anything in it and say anything and anybody believe that that's not true. It has to be with every member of that child, including Farrah, even though some people don't want Farrah in it. She has a story even though she's in it for five months. Yes, she won't be I want, she won't be in it. I want everybody to be a part of it because this is a story that soon is going to be told. Just like they've done um, Michael Jackson, like normally every big group has a story based on them or loosely based on them. And Destiny's Child hasn't had one yet. And we'll probably be 50 before this even happens. But they all have to be willing to talk and tell the truth. And until they tell the truth, we won't never know. Like, I just find it weird that, you know, bitch, I find out I'm kicked out of a group by seeing a video of these other girls. But, you know, the good thing is that Michelle has met Latavia, their good girlfriend, not Latavia, um, Latoya. Like, they've all been able to have their own problem counseling, but bitch, I'm to see it through them, right? I want to see you, how you met this person and how was it offering all of that stuff. Like, yeah, I want to see all of it. But we're never going to see it right now. Maybe we might see something about Beyonce, Beyonce and Jay-Z, the story of their life. But I want to see it. I feel like you. I feel like we all want to see it, but I feel like you'd have to see that. You're not going to see it no time soon because the reason why you're not going to see it no time soon for one reason: Beyonce is still Beyonce, and as long as she's still Beyonce, you're not going to see nothing like that. You got to wait. We have to wait until Beyonce is no longer Beyonce. She now retired and sit down and then say to herself, "You know what? Maybe I do want to tell the story." She'll be but no, as long as she's Beyonce. You can forget it. You know why? Because there may be something that might she might feel as though it might hurt her and her brain. And so therefore, we're not putting that out there. You know what I mean? Like look at look at first of all, look at the type of and you and I know her publicist, Yvette. We know her. Yvette ain't going that nothing that's going to tarnish Beyonce's name be put out there. And if it is, it's gonna be immediately Respawn and take it down, and then that's going to be the end of that. 
You know what I mean? We're going to talk about it for a few days, and then by the following week, we're going to hear no more about it. That's the type of team Beyonce has. I feel as though as long as Beyonce is Beyonce, we ain't going to hear or see no movie until Beyonce is no longer Beyonce. <laughs> There's a new Beyonce, and Beyonce will sit back and say, you know what, Jay? I think it's time that I do one deal. Let me call the rest of the girls here. They want to do it. And then that's how it's going to happen. So right now, we can got to forget it. We can stop asking. Jay, there won't be a BET or Lifetime. No. <laughs> and as long as Beyonce got something to do with it, it'll be in the theaters. Yes. Um, uh, so Chris and Michelle did an interview with the Breakfast Club. And I am upset that I didn't see it. I've seen her on um, CNN with Brooke Paul too. Um, I get every place where she's trying to come from. But, you know, you perform for Donald Trump and Trump. And... I don't agree with the way the names that people are calling you, and if people want to boycott you, that's the best way for them to do it, instead of calling you a name. But you saying that you wanted to be the voice for people or black people, people want you to be the voice. They would rather let people like John Lewis be the voice. The people mm-hmm. that were a part of the civil rights movement meet with um, Donald Trump. Uh, those are the people that they want to see. The people that's been trying to get them at their table for so long, mm-hmm. and he won't go. Mm-hmm. Like Donald Trump can have me with the NWCP. Mm-hmm. They can be the voice for black people, not Chrisette Michelle. Now, maybe if you had a little bit more status, you know, people will understand. Like, for instance, I think if Beyonce said, you know what, I want to have a conversation with Donald Trump. I think it could happen and she would not suffer a backlash no. like mm-hmm. Chrisette Michelle no. would. No. Chrisette Michelle, they'd be like, girl, who are you? No. Like, bitch, ain't nobody going to lie you? Because I think that, first, like you said, I think that it would have to be a, a powerful voice. No, no, Beyonce is not a, a, what do you call it, that we were saying that Steve Harvey and them are. What's the word that we were saying? And they're not a, uh, they're not a, a leader, I think we were saying they weren't a leader for our career or whatever they were doing. Yeah, we yeah, like were that. saying something like that. I can't think to get one word. Beyonce's not that either. She's definitely not. Now, she's a big influence, but she's not a leader of the black community. She's definitely not that. But I think that, like you said, not going to perform, but I think that if Beyonce said, you know what, I want to sit down and talk to Donald Trump and figure something out as to why it is that you know, he feels as though we as the African African community can trust him and that we should rally behind him. I think that Beyonce would get more of respect than Chrisette Michelle going to perform. Because, see, when people viewed, I saw Chrisette Michelle performing, they saw her, and I got something to say to that. I know some, some people probably saying, well, how come y'all think Beyonce can do it and not Steve Harvey? And I'm going to explain why. Chrisette Michelle... Chrisette Michelle performing, or any black performer of that matter, performing for Donald Trump, is basically, it looks like to the black community, oh, you just happy and you celebrating. You're celebrating his win. You're celebrating him. And when you're celebrating him, that means that you're celebrating his policies. Right. And so, therefore, I'm not going to view you and respect you anymore, not saying that I should disrespect you all these types of names, but I'm just not going to support you anymore because now you're celebrating this man that did all these bad things. Why I feel like Beyonce could do it and not Steve Harvey, I feel like Beyonce could do it and not Steve Harvey because I think that, well, well, let me just say this, Steve Harvey could do it. I just feel like Steve Harvey did it in the wrong way. I think that by Steve Harvey allowing Donald Trump to usher him up to his big white, his big glass tower in the sky in New York City and then come on down to the reporters and the cameras and make a spectacle of, oh, I met with this great black leader. I felt like Steve Harvey, he, like I say all the time, having the power, he could have taken control and said, you know what, Mr. Trump, I want to do you one better. You know what I want to do? When you become president, Mr. Trump, I want to have a one-on-one interview with you in the White House. And I want you, I want this interview to be based on you talking to the African-American that would have been that great segment for your show. That's how Steve Harvey should have did it. Because this way, we can hear what you were saying and how you were saying it. Because now, because Mr. Trump, I'm Steve Harvey, Mr. Trump, you said that what do the blacks have to lose? Now, me being a black entertainer, a big black entertainer, you can tell me what it is that we have to lose by coming on, coming on board with you and you coming on my show. That's how Steve Harvey could 
could have done it. And I feel like Beyonce could do it the same way. Now, I know she don't have problems with the show, but you know that Beyonce would have had cameras around and it would have put been put in some type of documentary or post on her website. They would have did it some type of way in that manner. That's how Steve Harvey could have taken control of the situation. Instead of letting Donald Trump parade him around, you know what, I'm going to come to the White House and I'm going to interview you just like David Muir just did for ABC News. And we're going to have a one-on-one conversation about why it is that you feel as though the black community should rally around you and what it is that you can do for us that the other presidents weren't able to do. That's how Steve Harvey should have done it. And I think more back black folks would have said, you know what, Steve Harvey, I respect you for doing it this way. But you went up to Trump Tower and visited him. We don't know what that conversation was about. We only know what Steve Harvey said. He only said what the conversation was about because of the backlash. You know what I mean? But who's to really say, you know, Donald Trump comes out and says a whole other story. And every, everybody said, oh, we had a great meeting. But you don't know what the great meeting was about. No. You know what I mean? Nope, not at all. And, um, you know... Chris Evans show was then saying like, oh, she, now she wanted to be like Van Jones and have it um, going to interview different people. They don't know Chris Evans show because anybody will let you in the house. Talking about Van Jones, I want to um, do an interview with John Lewis and you know all the other big names. And yeah, she wants to have a lot. Like, girl, fucking bye. Nobody is going to take you seriously. They're trying to do all of this to save face. <laughs> um, you did this. You, you performed at the inauguration. You claim, oh, this is what I wore. These are some of the things that I said. Your words did not have impact to that crowd. Mm-hmm. If you would have said Black Lives Matter, if you would have said key words to them and that people can make a news story about, then you did not have no impact to that inauguration. It doesn't matter what gospel song you say. Because your words are only going to those people in that room. Your words need to go beyond that room and around the world. And to be quite honest with you, I told you in our last video, I loved her performance. I told you that. But to be quite honest with you, I felt bad because I actually didn't notice her dress. She was noticed. She said that on her dress. She had on her like, And I'm like, girl, I didn't notice that. Because to be quite honest with you, the camera wasn't panning into your dress. It was doing wide shots. You know what I mean? It wasn't panning into your dress. Yeah, like that. So, no. And I, I'm a, I, I feel bad that I didn't uh, pan it. Pay attention to your dress, but I was so what? She it wasn't right. an impact. It wasn't an impact. So you, 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 what you did failed. Yeah. But you got to check for it. And you got to check for it. It looks like that. They can say whatever they want. Mm-hmm. As long as they write a good check, you'll say it. Right. Just like Shirley Brown said on Wendy Williams, all money ain't good money. And she was talking about the country. She was talking about her and uh, Jennifer Holliday. Yeah. Yeah. She was trying to be nice. Without saying, without being happy. But what do you do? And what do you do? That's what we need to get to. For a second, I'm saying, oh yeah, I'm not broke. I'm not, I'm not doing this for money. But you should have said, you should have took a stand on that stage. Mm-hmm. And say, listen, before I even attempt to say, or I didn't even come here to say, I just came to make a statement. Or something else you could do is donate that check, whatever you got. Mm-hmm. You could donate to anything. Because people are going to look at you weird. Like, what are you doing? And the fact that she even thought that she was going to be able to shake his hand. She got so upset that she couldn't shake his hand. But you really think he was going to let that you house nigga come in his house and shake his hand? No, he wants you to come and show the drive for him and then take your ass back out to the fields with Scott that needs to be picked. And then you think about tomorrow, goddamn. Yeah, and then you'll just be down. He'd be like, black man, we have Chris Michelle before we You were that, Chris Michelle. You were that talking nigga. He was that talk, she was the part of that talking nigga group. That Donald Trump can say, I like black people. See, I have them. Yeah, I'm going to have them. Yeah, because they got that. They, that's the person they said we're going to do. Martin Luther King III, who they call Martin Luther King Jr. Jr. At the White House. <laughs> you know what? Martin Luther King Jr. need to come back and say, everybody's free. Martin Luther King Jr. has been here for nearly 50 years. How do you even confuse that? If anything, if you didn't, I would say, if anything, I would give him the benefit of the doubt if he said Martin Luther King Jr.'s son. Yes. But the fact that he said Martin Luther King Jr. was here, yeah. talking to President Trump. How? And what is going on after your meeting? I didn't run Martin Luther King Jr. third. Because they're not talking thing. about anything. I want you all to talk about, like, it's quick to go to war. It's quick to sign these executive orders. Be quick to start helping these communities. Mm-hmm. And Chicago do need help. Mm-hmm. Chicago need help with the police and they need help with their citizens. Something's got to get somewhere. Yeah. Because it's bad. It's bad when you hear from Donald Trump, but who are these? I don't know what the other people in Chicago are doing, so I can't talk bad about them. But 
Oh, we have the mayor is y'all need to get this ex out. Like Chicago really needs a makeover. Like how New York, remember how we used to hear about New York came with all of this crime or whatever. Whatever crime they did to where there are eight over eight million people in New York City. New York City. And I think they only had about a hundred killings or something like that. It's very it's even less than Philadelphia. New York City is the biggest city in the United States. Yeah, but they cracked down on so much. Yeah, and yeah. Cracked, the fact that the largest city in the United States was able to crack down on the, the murder rate and the crime rate, it's like, wow. Yeah, everybody was talking, they got cameras everywhere. Every buckle there. <laughs> but I did see that special report where those cameras are suddenly not for dirt up there. Don't worry. Don't say that. I'm just saying, don't give no eye on the wall. Listen, I saw, if I saw that, I'm going to get out of the list here. These are all female shoes are like, oh, uh, and I've been having to. Um, you know, check my sodium count, my high blood pressure, all that stuff. It's been, it's been tough. Like, I'll be like, I remember before y'all used to get on me like, oh, Kevin, make sure that frozen stuff is not high in sodium. I'm like, fuck the sodium, I'm looking at the calories. Bitch, no, you got to look at everything. You got to check, make sure that you're not having too much salt in your body. Like, I'm really doing my thing. The only thing is, I hate that it costs so much just to eat right. You can eat whatever is on the healthy thing and it'd be like a dollar. Bitch, everything goes four or five dollars. That's why so many big people out here because it's so cheap to eat unhealthy. Yes. It's expensive to eat healthy. Yes. So you gotta go wild the farm or get it straight on my farm. I go inside the damn store, order a milkshake. I'll wait ten minutes for a milkshake. What y'all doing? Milk in the cow? Okay. Where's my milkshake? Ten minutes. That's to be one of the first things when you come. Yes! Out. They already made it. Where is my milkshake? Why are you waiting for the rest of your sandwich? Oh, you went to go get the stool? To go sit there on the deck house? What's taking so long? What? Oh, you ain't had a bucket and stuff ready? Mm-hmm. Damn! Milk in the cow. <laughs> and, uh, Chrisette, baby. Spike me is not supposed to be your mentor, and I don't even think that. I don't even think you Spike's here. He wants to mentor you. You're still you're supposed to be my peer, like I would have been. Why does she feel like he's supposed to be her mentor? I guess because she wants to move this now for no good for things. Now this is all this whole new thing now. If you don't stop throwing up the bed, so that's irritating. So just pour it in your hand. Like a child. Jesus. I'm hearing this crackling, crackling, crackling. Oh God. Stop! Damn. So, she's talking about I got a new, I'm gonna do a new movie, I'm gonna do a show. Like, girl, no. Nobody's she should be calling Spike Lee, she should be calling Tyler Perry, because he has everything about it. Yeah, and if he don't hire her, that, that be his problem. The only thing I do agree with what she said is that, Steve, right? The <laughs> <laughs> only thing I agree with what she said is that we need to have these conversations. Just because you disagree with me, don't mean we can't talk. No, this so is that you right. on Twitter. You should have called me. I'm sure you forget the number. Oh, who's you talking about, Spike Lee? He don't want to call me. Talk to you. But you should. But if you want to run through our fine. Right. But I still think that you should have that conversation. Yes. Yeah, but, but just because I have a conversation with you, don't think I'm going to hire you next. Yeah. But she can still, like, even, like, I think I think she knows she's doing wrong, but you do. I think she should. No, she don't want to get wrong because she's got a lot of black people out there supporting her. But she wanted to defend herself. But she, you kind of feel like you're wrong, but you keep defending yourself. But, you defend anyway. yourself. but let me tell you something. If Tyler Perry won't hire her, she got one more choice. Get the age. After that, mm. yes, yes, he might make white people in. Why does he have age in her? Okay, I'm surprised he wasn't up on that. They already have that. Like, yeah. She can't vote for November 8th. Okay. There was children in her. They're going to do better. Okay? They showed you. I got to get my country back. They came out under every and they stood in them lines to talk to you like they was your best oh, friend. Yeah. As soon as they get captured in that box, I don't know that nigga. Click. I would never vote for Trump when you call. And they showed you. They showed you. They wrote. And they only four women that spoke. That's why women are powerful. The Donald Trump fired everybody. They're not saying that. They're not saying that. Mm-hmm. Women have the power. A lot of them just don't know that they have the power. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm just, I'm just kidding. So we go. I'm gonna go. You know, all those crumbs stuff in the beer. I do. I'd rather have that. I know. You, you know, both of us feel like you did. I don't know. <laughs> I've never had that on my face. Last, I never did. 
performance heating and air conditioning techs and vans all over town making customers happy call high performance right now and save thousands of dollars per season with special interest financing on a high efficiency hot water boiler high performance will make you as happy as Harold. 